Right, are you two going to do this axle and I'll do the chassis? Or do you want me to do the axle and you do the chassis? Oh, it's like that, is it? You just want to play with your ball? Looks like I'm doing axle then. Hello and welcome back to the channel. So, I think I'm as eager as everybody else for me to now get on with the Land Rover again. So I'm going to start with the axle, drain the oil. First thing you do is drain the oil. Um, even if you're doing discs and pads, you may as well change the oil because you've got to take the half shafts out. I'm going to remove the discs. Uh, I've already removed the brake pipes, calipers. I'm going to attack it with a needle gun. And then I've got some flat discs as well. I'm going to rub the axle down, give it a coat of primer, and I can be changing the discs over while that's drying. I've already got the one piece shafts from Britpart in, I'll run you through those as well. Uh, I've got brand new discs, brand new calipers, so let's get on with it. To be able to rub the axle down properly, I've got to remove the brake disc to be able to paint it properly. Uh, these, these were on when I bought it, uh, and they were due for replacing anyway, all the calipers had seized up. They were a bit of a mess, so, so I'm not messing about, get everything I need for it. The only thing I, I have changed is the half shafts. This was fitted with the, I'm sure there was terra firma, heavy duty half shaft ends and they were really worn so every time you change gear there was a really big bang from the back of the axle so I got these brick part shafts that I'll run through later on so for the minute you need a 52mm socket once you've removed the half shaft just to get the hub off and then I'll start rubbing it down so something worth mentioning, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it because everybody's out with the lawnmowers today with the half shaft in, this wheel bearing you couldn't tell if it was noisy take the half shaft out and spin it freely I don't think you'll be able to hear it, but it's just starting to make a noise. Now it wouldn't fail the MOT and there's no play in the bearing, but it's stupid if I strip it down now knowing this bearing's noisy and not replace it. So I'm going to get new bearing sets, uh, new gaskets for the hub, new half shaft oil seals and obviously new gaskets for the end. And it, as I say, it just seems stupid if I don't replace it. So this is virtually now getting a full refurb. <laughs> There we go. So you can't get to everything with those flat blades, but everything's really nice and smooth. I'll just give it a quick wipe with a rag uh, before putting the uh, primer on. So this is a different paint I've used. I couldn't get hold of any my guy like I did the front of the chassis. So I managed to get hold of some red oxide primer, a big 40 litre drum of it. We've used red oxide quite a lot and we've never had a problem with it. It is really good stuff. You tend to find the actual chassis paint chips off, but the red oxide seems to stay there. So yeah, I was more than happy to use it. So it's had two coats of red oxide now. 
Now while that paint's drying, I'm going to strip down the hubs. I've got a bit of cleaning and painting to do on the hubs. Uh, replace all the wheel bearings, all the gaskets and seals before putting them back onto the axle. So while the axle's drying up now, I'm going to work on the hubs and the stubs. So I'm going to replace all the gaskets and all the seals. I'm going to replace the discs, the calipers, everything. This axle's getting a total refurbishment. The only thing I'm not going to touch is the diff because there's hardly any play in the um, drive shaft flange. I didn't have any problems with it. It wasn't noisy, so I'm not even going to touch that. I'm just going to replace the oil and go from there. So if you own a Land Rover and you do your own work, I'd highly recommend one of these. They're only about £10. Uh, as you'll see in my other videos, this one broke. <laughs> so I had to uh, fix it with a bolt. It used to be adjustable. It's not anymore. But I'm not bothered. So all you do is hook underneath and pull it straight out. Right, I'm just giving it a clean out inside. Just get all the old grease out of there. The new one I've got is a Bear Marsh, Bear Mark, whatever you want to call it. That is the part number there. And it is slightly different to the original seals. If anything, it's a more robust seal. And the way you want to be fitting it is, let's just show you the old one. So you want to be fitting it that way down, like that. And the new one, you can see it's a more robust when the camera focuses. So the new one you can see it is a bit more robust than the old one. It's got like this extra support on the inside around here. So the way you want to be fitting it is obviously get a towel or something in the vise. You don't have to secure the stub, just make sure that it's the vise is supporting it either side here. So I've just smeared some grease around the edges just to help it go in. So you can start it just by pushing in and then with a 32mm socket just very slowly just tap away. There we are, that's that fitted. So it is pretty simple, I've cleaned up the hub so I'll fit this back on the axle now and then give it a quick paint. Give the faces a clean up. Uh, we've got a new gasket and clean the washer up as well. So I'll fit this and then I'll start stripping the hub down, replace the bearings and the disc. So to get the bearing racers out, all you need is a punch or a blunt chisel and you can actually see the racers uh, protruding out from the hub. So copper hammer and all you need to do is just give them a tap. That's the inner race. So that's the lip. There you can just probably see the outer race just sticking up very slightly. So I always find it easier to leave the disc on because it gives you more, more room to get the race out. So I'll just do the outer, outer race now. If you are using a chisel be very careful that you don't damage the hub. And that's why I've got a, quite a small punch. You don't need to hit them hard. It's just little taps. As long as you keep the race even, it'll come out nicely. There we go. 
Now these bearings are exactly the same, they're exactly the same part number, so there's no way you can get them wrong, which is good. So I'll just give that a clean now and then I'll remove the disc. So now to remove the disc, you need a 14mm 12 point socket, come on. And providing these have been greased, they should come out all right. Well, they've not been greased, but. They don't need to be overly tight either, so they come out nice and easy. And then what I always do, just be careful if you've got ABS on your Defender, block of wood under there, turn the disc round, and then with the copper hammer, just tap the disc, and it, it'll slide off evenly. So a block of wood in there, obviously turn it upside down, and then just give it a tap. That's a hub now dry, so now I'm going to put the new wheel bearings in. Now the bearings I've got are Timken bearings, and these are actually used by Land Rover from the factory. So I'll just put the part number on for you, because these are for the Puma. So that's the part number, and the hub seal, another bear mask seal, that's the other part number. So yeah, genuine bearings, they're not overly expensive, I think they're about £15 each. Uh, they're exactly the same uh, in the outer race and the inner race, all the same part number. So the grease I'm using is actually for BPW axles on trailers, well HGVs. It's very good stuff, really, really, really good stuff. It's really expensive, about, it's about £20 a tube I think, but there's a reason it's expensive, because it's really good. So I'm using that grease. When you strip the hubs, make sure that, I forgot what it's called now, uh, that goes in between the actual bearings. So that's going to be put in last when the outer bearing goes in. These are specific to each hub, so make sure they go back in the right one. I've got here a Franklin bearing and seal driver now I've had this since I was an apprentice so <laughs> it's had some stick over the years but it's still very very good this actually is one of the best things I've bought especially for doing wheel bearings uh, how it works just give that a wipe so let's get a new wheel bearing So the actual race of the bearing goes over the top, you put that in the hub and then hit it down. Now if you, that's aluminium so that absorbs most of the shock but also if you use a copper hammer you're not really going to do any damage to the hub or the race. So that is a great little bit of kit, in fact the part number's still on it if you're interested so. Oh my god I'm going to have to clean everything again now. So this is a Franklin, that is the part number there, TA157, and I don't think they're expensive either. So I've had that from an apprentice, so it's lasted quite a while. Right, so, everything's now clean. Yeah, make sure everything's clean. All I do is just put a bit of grease around the outside of the race. I should advise wearing gloves 
but I haven't got any at the minute so I'm too impatient to wait for some just put that all the way around it's now level so copper hammer get that quick wipe on there That's going now. That's down to the bottom. Give that a quick wipe around the top. Flip it over. Now I did clean the bench before, and this rag it's just stained to death. So it is a clean rag, everything's spotlessly clean. I get your next bearing. So because that's now the outer race, so keep that bearing there for when you put the hub back on the axle. This is going to be the inner race. Get that clean. Wipe all the manufacturing oil off it. Again, just a bit of grease just around the outside, just to help it go down into the hub. And same again. There we go. So you can just have a quick feel with your fingernail, and that's down all the way around, and so is that one. So if you've got a tool like this, it's great for doing this. This job will be a doddle for you. And the next thing now is to grease. The bearing, the inner bearing, I'm going to leave the outer bearing for now and grease that when I actually fit the hub on the axle. But for now, I'll get the inner bearing greased and then put the hub seal on and that's then ready to fit. So when it comes to greasing wheel bearings, there's only one way to do it in my opinion. And you've got to, it's called packing. So you put some grease in the palm of your hand. I'm going to have to wipe my hands actually. And you've got to push the grease in. You know the bearing's full when the grease comes through the rollers. So instead of just piling it all over the top, actually force the grease into the bearing, and then you know that bearing's fully packed. Because if you just smear it round, the, the grease isn't in the rollers. So by the time it's worked its way in, there's actually not enough grease for the full bearing. Let's just have a splodge of this, palm of your hand. Right, I'll go on camera so you can see what I'm doing. So palm of your hand and just push it in. Now you can do it fast, slow, do it how you want. But as long as that grease is coming out the other side, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. You see there, in between here, you can actually see the grease coming through the rollers. So you know that that bearing is full. So I'll just quickly go all the way around now. And yes, this does get messy. See now, just now it's just coming through there.
So that's it. That's our way around now. Once you know you've been all the way around, just do a quick all the way around again. You can actually see it forcing the rest of the grease out. So that bearing's fully packed on the inside, so just a matter of cause, put some around the outside then, and then actually rotate the inner race. So you can see the roller's moving, and then just do it again. So that bearing now is fully packed. Put some in the hub. In the centre, it's actually called a reservoir. So if you fill that up, then once the bearing's under pressure, it will try and squeeze squeeze the grease out. So once the grease is squeezed out, that reservoir is already full. So it does actually maintain the grease inside the bearing. Now give me hands a wipe now. Clean hands. So this is the hub seal. That's the part number. And unfortunately, I don't have a socket big enough to go around, but I've done the other side. And what I'm actually using is the old seal. So I don't damage the new one. So you put that on there, put the old seal around the top, and just can't really just push it in a little bit. Oops. And you just ease the new one in with the old one. So I'll try and get around there so you can see. Now very slowly, just ease the new one in with the old seal. Usually I'd get a socket that fits, but that's the biggest socket I can find and it's, it's actually pushing on the inside, so I'm not risking damaging it when I've got the old one I can just use. Because you're actually wanting to hit the metal outer ring to push it into the hub. So using that, it doesn't matter if you damage that one. And that's now in all the way around. So it's now time to fit the brake discs. <laughs> now these are performance brakes, well, well this. Um, I, the only performance bit about them is obviously the, gr the drilled holes, which are all the way through, not just little dimples, and obviously the grooves, and this helps with cooling. Now. These were already on the Land Rover when I bought it. And that's as much as I can say other than I fitted some on the front with new calipers and they work a treat. They're really, really good. Um, they're brick part discs, but actually made by EBC, which for those of you who don't know, EBC specialise in performance brakes. That and they're not much more expensive than normal discs. So you might as well get the ones that look good. <laughs> So I'll get this fitted now. For those of you that may fancy some of these, that is the part number and that is a pair. So they are handed left and right as well, so you've got to get them right. Right, so these just go on. I clean the hub up so they should slide on nicely. To the bolts. Put a bit of copper slip on them. Only a bit, you don't need much. 
and these bolts don't need to be over tight either. Again, pop it in. Oh, wait. I'll see it this way, don't know. And then just check by hand. So I'm going to leave that one there today, uh, there will be a part 2 of this, uh, just waiting for the primer to dry off, I'll probably give it another coat and then start with the chassis paint, and then we'll <laughs> go on. So yeah, join me in part 2, I'm going to paint the axle up, with the chassis paint, fit the hubs, fit the calipers, just basically rebuild the axle. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.